Man, we don't have very many Victory Mondays, but we got one today. So we're going to celebrate like we ain't going to have no more anytime soon. Tune in for Locked on Jaguar. You are Locked on Jaguars, your daily Jacksonville Jaguars podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. I hear no lies being told. We are your daily Jacksonville Jaguars podcast here on Locked On Jaguars. I am Tony Wiggins, the host, and thank you for joining us, especially to the everydayers. And you can find us on our YouTube page that is Locked On Jaguars and or wherever you listen or hear your podcast. We're glad that you joined us. Today's episode is brought to you by Hillsdale College. Go right now to hillsdale.edu slash locked on to enroll. There's no cost and it's easy to get started. I'm going to tell you where we're going to start at today. We're going to start. Uh, well, we're going to end up talking about Trayvon Walker and his presence that is absolutely being felt in these games for the Jacksonville Jaguars. Uh, he's having a year, man. He, he's doing real well. He's up to his sixth sack right now. And, um, that puts him in a uh, very, very good company uh, at the top of the sack board. But it's more than that. It's just that you can actually see the dividends of his hard work paying off. Trevor Goff, what do I mean by that? Well, I've said all, all along that the Jaguars need to find a way to use Trevor Lawrence the way that the Detroit Lions have used Jared Goff. It worked. That's exactly what they sort of did yesterday. We'll talk about that and what hinders them from doing that all the time. Uh, but first, just victory Monday. The Jacksonville Jaguars uh, won their second game in London uh, by the score of 32-16, beating the hapless New England Patriots. Ain't nobody got time to be sitting here feeling sorry for New England. I don't care that New England's bad because the Jacksonville Jaguars had a shot uh they could have gone out there and not won the game yesterday so uh they did they actually got it and that's exactly what uh what we should be happy about they won they can't help who they play it is not up to them to decide who they're going to play and who they aren't going to play so the jaguars beat a, a very bad team of course we know that in new england but the alternative is they could have lost to that bad team so that's one of the things that we'll focus on. The fact is that they handled their business. They ate their food. It was sitting right in front of them, and they took care of it. That's exactly what a team is supposed to do when given a shot. And, and I know that they're happy about it because if you follow the Jaguars enough and you've seen, seen the way that they've called plays, now, early in the game, I was pissed. I'm not going to lie to you. Because of the defensive rotations, I, I still don't understand that. Um, I guess it worked in their favor yesterday because they kind of wore down the Patriots. But I don't know why you got to be taking dudes out after three or four plays in the game. And, and, and <laughs> my man Cap said they're rolling USFL guys in when you're taking your high price starters out of the game. So it really, really doesn't make a lot of sense to us. And I'm sure Ryan Nielsen has a, uh, a reason for doing it. Uh, I talked to uh, my man Jarvis Davis early in the year. I've talked to Ross Jackson. Jarvis covers the Atlanta teams up in Atlanta. And um, Ross, of course, is with Locked On uh, Saints. They both told me that players love Ryan Nielsen and that he's going to rotate people. That's just what he does. Uh, so uh, a lot of that, too, I don't know if he rotated people this much. A lot of it goes back to the thought that Nielsen said that when he got here, it was something that he sat down with. Um, I think he said Doug and Trent, if I'm not mistaken, but mainly with Doug Peterson, and they decided that they were going to do this because the team was not fresh late in game. So when you ask why do they keep doing it if it doesn't seem to be working, it's because that's what they planned on doing from the very beginning. He told us that, and specifically me when I asked him the question. He told me that during a training camp. So, you know, teams just – these guys get to the pinnacle of their profession, and they are just creatures of habit. They just, they just do – uh, what they said and what they planned and what they started and sought out doing. And, you know, it, it doesn't make sense to us that they keep doing it. But my only guess is, and, it, and I've thought about it all night long. The only guess uh, I have is, is 
we just ain't going to change our plans just because we ain't winning games, especially if we don't think that's the reason why we're not winning games. My only thing is you're not winning games. So would you try something different to try to win games? And a lot of times the Jaguars don't get off to really, really good starts. So I think that they're worried more about the finish than they are to start, but you can't get to the finish until you get off to a good start. And to me, it's just, it's something that's a little weird, but it is what it is. But yesterday it worked. Yesterday it worked. If you look at time of possession, they were able to get New England off the field. Drake May still had a statistically good game with 26 uh, completions and 37 attempts, 276 yards, two tutties and no INT. So from a Patriot standpoint, if you're looking at that uh, with your new quarterback in the second star, you're thinking like, wow, that's very, very good. Now, the Patriot fans and some other fans that saw that game yesterday don't see a whole lot of Trevor Lawrence. And what they saw in him yesterday was 15 out of 20, 193, one TD, two two rushes. He, he carried uh, twice for 13 yards. One of them was an 11-yard scramble. And you say, well, he doesn't look as bad as everyone says that he he's looked all year. You're right, he didn't. He, he absolutely didn't. The team didn't. And they were able to run the football for 171 yards on 39 carries. So uh, they've been uh, often in the past, maybe two years ago, they were, the Jaguar staff was criticized a lot for running the ball too much and taking the ball out of their quarterback's hand. Then uh, throughout Trevor's struggles, people wanted them to run the football more. I've come to the conclusion that what people really want, they want stuff that works. Nobody knows the answer. They think they do. But people want if something works, then it was a good plan. If it doesn't work, it was a bad plan. The only thing I questioned about the game yesterday was I thought early in the game they gave away a possession. Trevor Lawrence completed two passes to um, Evan Ingram on the first drive. So he, the problems that Trevor normally would have in the passing game early they weren't there normally he's throwing high it seemed like he was he was really on his game and on third down they threw a ball behind the line of scrimmage and i'm thinking like it's third and six are you really going to just depend on your guy to break tackles or you're depending on wide receivers to block why don't you just throw the ball down the field or well, seven yards down the field to either ingram christian kirk or preferably brian thomas jr I just, I just never get the whole throwing the ball behind the line of scrimmage, hoping that something happens. John Phillips, a uh, friend of mine, a uh, great attorney in Jacksonville, said this yesterday. He said his son said, Dad, it doesn't make sense. Basically, you're throwing the ball six yards behind the line of scrimmage. You need six, so now you need 12. And in the NFL, guys close space up too quickly for teams to always depend on being able to do that. So there are some things that they do that are absolute head scratchers, and it makes you wonder why. They had a chance to get another field goal yesterday that would have put them up uh, by two by two scores, and they and they went for it. I'm just thinking, like, why, man? It's just sometimes you know they invite trouble. They they ask you, uh, they ask teams to catch up to them, and they ask teams to beat them. So they got to clean a lot of that stuff up. They got tough games coming, man. They got Green Bay coming here, and Green Bay. Hey, that's nothing to shake a stick at. They play really, really good defense. They got a bunch of wide receivers. They're tough in the running game. They got a good offensive line and a really, really hot quarterback in Jordan Love. So that's going to be a tremendous challenge for the Jacksonville Jaguars moving forward. I want to talk more about Trevor Lawrence or Trevor Goff, as I call him. I know people are going to get mad at me when I do that, but I don't care. Yeah, we'll talk more about him moving forward and how the Jaguars uh, pretty much set a blueprint yesterday. Um for how they need to play with Trevor Lawrence as their quarterback. And we'll get to more of that in just a second here on Locked on Jaguars. Today's show is sponsored and brought to you by BetterHelp. Therapy is always good, man, especially when you're dealing with a whole lot of stuff. For a long time, there were stigmas and people didn't want to use therapy and they thought it was invasive and all that. I am a witness. That is not true. Uh, getting older and having to deal with time management to go along with uh, pain management and, and and still having to work and provide for my family. Sometimes it can put you in a stressful situation. You know, as men, we always just, every time somebody hits us with a problem, we say, I'll take care of it. But getting to the I'll take care of it part takes a lot of work. And sometimes you need a little bit of guidance and a little bit of help. And you can get that 
at BetterHelp. If you're thinking and considering about starting therapy, please give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. Overcome your fears with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash locked on today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash locked on. Today's show is sponsored also by Hillsdale College. Let me tell you something, man. It ain't never, ever a bad idea to get smarter, right? Especially when the courses are for free. That's right. I'm going to give you some of the, uh, a few of the courses that are available at Hillsdale College, who's our sponsor, because they're offering more than 40 free, that's right, free online courses, including Constitution 101, whoo, the meaning and history of the Constitution, introduction to free market economics, two things that I think should interest a lot of people today, the great American story of land of hope, the rise and fall of the Roman, the Roman Republic, and a brand new documentary style course on Marxism, socialism, and communism. Then we're already educating yourself. Go right now to hillsdale.edu slash locked on to enroll. There's no cost and it's easy to get started. That's hillsdale.edu slash locked on to register. That's hillsdale, H I L L S D A L E dot edu slash locked on. All right, rolling along here, we're going to talk a little bit about the Jacksonville Jaguars quarterback who had a very, very efficient game, and that is Trevor Lawrence. By no means do I think Trevor Lawrence needs to be reduced to a quarterback where you have to handcuff him. By no means do I want to suggest that I'm saying that Trevor Lawrence is a, uh oh, here we go, Cam Newton, quote unquote, system quarterback. I am not saying that the only way he can be successful is if you don't let him try to do too much and don't put too much on him because that, in, in a, you know, would go against everything that Doug Peterson has even talked about. So he was answering questions a few years ago and people were like, do you think you're putting too much on him? He said, how you put too much on him? He's your quarterback. You ain't putting too much on him. You ask a lot, but if a person has the goods to be able to deliver a lot, then there's no such thing as putting too much on him. And, and I would agree with that to a certain extent. I do think that there's a fine line you have to walk, though, where you don't have to have a guy playing hero ball. And uh, even the quarterbacks that do seem to do that, like the Patrick Mahomes and maybe the Josh Allens of the world and even Joe Burrow to a certain extent, or, of course, Lamar Jackson, they're able to do that within the confines of the game and allow their natural ability to take over in, in high pressure and high key moments in big games against really, really good teams. Not all the time. Sometimes it don't take all that, right? <laughs> you know, to, to put it bluntly, it just doesn't take all that a lot of times. A lot of times you just have to do your job and trust that your teammates are going to do their job. And you can't do that until you actually, well, ask your teammates and, and give them an opportunity and require them to do the things that they need to do because it's going to open everything up for everyone else. And that's where I believe the running game comes into effect. This is why I've been begging for really, really good offensive line play. The last three weeks, they played pretty well. Now, we got to monitor Cam Robinson. He was in a concussion protocol yesterday, but Walker Little came in and played. In fact, I didn't see a big difference between the two. Shout out to them. Shout out to Coach Phil Rauscher for the last three weeks playing well. They didn't necessarily play that good against Chicago. I, I got to at least say that. that. That was a little bit of a downer, but that's because when the game got away from them, it was obvious what they needed to do. But while that game was really, really tight or close early, the offensive line did not play as poorly as they had played in the past. They played a real good game against the Colts and a good game again yesterday, uh, i.e. that's why the Jaguars kept running the ball. I thought I was watching 1990s Nebraska early in the, uh, late in the game yesterday because they were getting it in. Even Dearness Johnson got in, got involved. They only used two running backs yesterday because Travis Etienne was injured. I've seen a situation where they've had three running backs touch the ball on, on the same drive before. And, and maybe that rotation and, and all of that foolishness 
the maybe is it, maybe you got to let guys get greased up. Tank Bigsby, you know, 26 carries, 118 yards. Doug Peterson is still all in on Travis Etienne being the starter. I know everybody wants Tank Bigsby to be running back one, but there are some things at play here that are helping Trevor Lawrence out. If the offensive line isn't as talented as we like now, they'll probably tell you the offensive line is great. I don't think they are. But they're playing better because, one, they're playing an inferior opponent. Let's just say that them and the Colts, the two teams the Jaguars have beaten this year, are not very good on their uh, defensive line. And they have some injuries. But, as I said, you got you just beat who's in front of you. They got Evan Ingram back who opens up some stuff and keeps those linebackers honest and keeps the safeties from, from just beelining downhill. That was one key. Um, the other key is Brian Thomas Jr., the more, the more you want to leave him one-on-one -on -one with people, it was Christian Gonzalez yesterday who was a victim. I don't care who you are. That kid's going to run right by you. He did it to Jalen Ramsey early in the year when people realize just how fast he is. Maybe they'll realize that they got to keep a little extra in there. But he has been opening things up. He had a 58-yard pass yesterday. And then around the red zone, he has a nose for the end zone. He has four TDs on the season. I believe that leads all rookies. And it's been able to open up some things. Uh, Christian Kirk and Gabe Davis had one catch each, one for 24 yards, one for 13 yards. We'll get back on them later. I don't, I don't necessarily know if they're worth the money that, that is being spent on them. But at the very least, you're getting that production from Brian Thomas Jr. You are getting uh, the return of Evan Ingram's production. So for Trevor Lawrence, it is opening things up a little bit. You, you're having success with multiple running backs. And that helps the offensive line. Doesn't hurt, too, when you're playing so well that you can only attempt 20 passes. I think that number needs to be a little bit higher, but he was extremely efficient, had a 121.5 quarterback. Uh, QBR is 95. The rating was 121. The QBR, you got to look up the difference. I can't. I, I'm just going to re – I'm just telling you I'm regurgitating that stuff, and I don't know the difference between either one of them. But uh, it was a good game. Good, solid game with a good game plan. Uh, Trevor can be special when he needs to be. And like the one he courts, uh, uncorked to Brian Thomas Jr. Uh, that changed field position yesterday. But it's the efficiency. It's the, the ball placement. It's not putting the ball in harm's way. It's getting the ball out of his hand. It's playing with confidence and playing loose. You do The, the, the Patriots are still professionals. But the fact that uh, Trevor Lawrence was able to do that and be able to have uh, the success that he had team-wise, it just felt good. I, I, they're not going to play this way all the time. I think Jared Goff threw it way more than 20 times yesterday. But this, this is how you do it. You can't just, when other things go wrong, just turn over and say, okay, save us. That's how, you get, that's how Trevor gets in trouble. Everything else has to play, play out the way it did yesterday. Now, the challenge is going to be, can they do that against – better teams we're going to discuss that he's going to have some help from the defensive side too and one of those people that have been really really helping uh this team lately is Trayvon Walker people don't want to admit it but Trayvon has actually arrived we'll discuss that more here on Locked on Jaguars FanDuel is the sponsor for today, and we thank our friends over at FanDuel because they are America's number one sports book. Sports and NFL fans, you can start the season with a big return on FanDuel, America's number one sports book. When you get a hunch in the middle of the game, you can check out the latest stats, view live, play-by-play, -play, and so much more on the same page where you placed your bets. Now, a lot of action going on, not just in the NFL. But, ooh, last night was busy. You had an NFL game. You had a WNBA game. It was, this was like sports all over the place, and folks were tuned in and dialed in. Ain't nothing wrong with having a parlay with more than one thing. Uh, but start with the NFL. You get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you placed your first $5 bet. I didn't say you had to win. I just said you had to place the bet, and you'll get $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place you're a five dollar bet at the top America's number one sports book, and that is fanduel.com. Make sure you slide on over to fanduel.com, win you some money at America's number one sports book, and make sure you get two hundred dollars in bonus bets when you make your first wager.
All right, man, rolling along here on Locked on Jaguars, where it is your team every day. That's right. Today's episode is also, also brought to you by Hillsdale College. Go right now to hillsdale.edu slash locked on to enroll. There's no cost and it's easy to get started. Y'all got to get smarter, especially when it's free. A lot of those courses are free. All right, listen. In order for this team to move on, I know we talk about Trevor Lawrence a lot. We talk about Doug, and we talk about the substitution patterns of Nielsen. And Lord knows we have talked about Press Taylor. I'm going to give some kudos, man, and I'm going to keep doing this because the national media is kind of starting to look around and, and kind of starting to take notice. And you actually hear it on the game telecast a lot. Trayvon Walker's playing well. Trayvon Walker's playing extremely well here uh, for the Jacksonville Jaguars. He has six sacks this year. He could have had seven. He could have had another one yesterday, too. The guy just got away from him a little bit. But he, he's coming up at the right time. And, and it seems like at least half of his sacks, he's pushing some 315-pound dude right back into the quarterback. And that's exactly what happened yesterday. Bull Rush had leverage on the outside arm. And he rolled that joker all the way back. It was real impressive a couple of weeks ago against the Colts because he did it against Braden Smith, who played really well the week prior to that against T.J. Watt. So these aren't backups that he's beating up on and doing this to. The, the kid he did yesterday was a big-time free agent. Uh, probably should be playing guard, but uh, he, he he's a big-time free agent that they signed uh, in New England. He's not their worst player, and Trayvon just took him for a ride yesterday and ran him right to the quarterback. At some point, they're going to have to start acknowledging that that kid is playing really, really well. And like his last uh, 13, 14 games, he's got like, what, 12, 13 sacks in his last 14 games. That's pretty damn good. That is pretty good. I don't care where you were picked. First, second, fifth he is going to be compared to Aiden Hutchinson forever. And we get that. And um he has 16 sacks in his career. Well, he has 16 sacks over the last 24 games. Aiden Hutchinson has 19. And I know people will get into the pressures and people get into all of that, but then you got to come back and now you got to look at the running game and you got to look at the edge setting and you got to look at the violence. And I just don't think, and as critical as we've been of the Jaguars defense, I don't know where they would be without him. I'm I'm serious. I just don't know. They Sometimes we wonder if they have attitude, if they have a lot of punch. They'd really be missing a lot of physicality and a lot of punch if Trayvon Walker wasn't on this team. So whatever people say about him, they better say how valuable he uh, is to the Jacksonville Jaguars this year. And I'm interested to see what his numbers look like. Uh, I said, what did I say in the preseason? I said somewhere between 12 and 15 sacks. Well, he's on his way to that because they ain't even at – Eight, he has six sacks already, and they only play seven games. If he could double that or even do a little bit better, he can have 12 by the time they hit 14 games with uh, three games left. Or he might make 15. And if he has multiple sack games like he's done at least twice this year, he's going to have some opportunities to do that. Now, this schedule gets really, really tough for Jacksonville. I just mentioned that they play Green Bay. They play Green Bay this week coming up here in Jacksonville. It's going to be a big game, too. And I know all those cheeseheads going to be uh, packed up in our stadium here uh, come next week. But, yeah, they got Green Bay. It's a 1 o'clock game. After that, they go up to Philly for a, a, a Sunday night game at 820. Then they go to Minnesota. Oof. That's a tough game. The Vikings are a real good team, and we saw that yesterday, and they lost to the Lions. And that's, well, they play at Minnesota here. I'm sorry. They play Minnesota at home, and then they turn around the very next week, and they go to the Lions, and then they come home to play the Texans. So this is where these guys got to show it, man. There's going to be some opportunities because Green Bay likes to throw the ball. They love to get after them, and both the Neil Hunter and Will Anderson for Houston had sacks yesterday. So it's going to be a real, real interesting game, and, and we're going to hear this week. Uh, Doug has a, a press presser this morning. We'll get as much information from that as we can, and we'll have it in tomorrow's show. But, yeah, man, a, a really, really uh, 
challenging schedule from here on out. Now, there was two ways you could look at this. They they could have won or lost yesterday against a bad team, but they happened to win the game. So if they were going to make a run, and I know people are going to be like, wait, shut up, they ain't going to do that. But if they were going to make a run, they needed to get off to that running start yesterday in a dominant fashion to have the confidence that they need. I'm telling you, the Jaguars get off to a fast start. If they get off to a very fast start over the next couple of weeks, they got a chance to win some of these games. But they can't give away possessions early like the one that they did yesterday. They, it just can't happen. And they can't let a team get a 10 nothing lead. You let one of these teams get a 10 nothing lead that they're about to play, and they might be curtains. And that's the only thing from yesterday's game that worries me and scares me just a little bit. So we'll continue to discuss that and discuss more things going on the rest of the week with the Jaguars as they prepare to bring it on back home for the first time in a few weeks. And they're going to play against the Green Bay Packers to start this gauntlet of a schedule. Now, I told you, if they get through these next five, six games, or maybe mainly the next five, if they can, five losses at a lot is a lot the loss of the half. If they get, if they go at least three and two over the next five, and that's going to be very, very difficult, then they ought to win out. Because uh, going three and two from this point would would make them five and seven with five games to go. They'd have to win out and and go ten and seven for the rest of the way and hope that they can get a wild card. Can't lose. They can't lose more than they can't lose three. If they lose three, I think they're finished because that gives them eight losses for the year. And I, I don't think nine and eight is going to cut it this year for a playoff shot. Make sure you tap into the new Locked On NFL, a double dose of uh, morning espresso with my man. My, Tyler Rowland is the madman, and y'all go check him out early in the morning on Locked On NFL. And swing back by the barbershop and holler at me. We use the local experts that know the teams better than anyone else to make sure that we hit all the hot spots here in the National Football League. Make sure you check that out. It's on the Locked On NFL page or wherever you hear or listen to your podcast you guys take care of each other enjoy victory monday we don't get very many and uh, we'll be back here tomorrow with another edition of locked on jaguars thank you